Hello and welcome to my video response to Deadlock DOS. Dark Souls actually suck. In this video, I will be going over many of the arguments presented in the video for and against Dark Souls, and my opinions and arguments against those arguments, because I find that many of them are rather lackluster, and there are many points that they did not cover and such. After going over the video, I will also talk about other arguments I have found throughout the internet, and I will also talk about the problems I personally have with the game and other arguments that I do agree, actually agree with. So before going any further, I must emphasize this point. I do have problems with Dark Souls, and I admit it's not a perfect game, not by a long shot. Definitely is not. No game is perfect. And it definitely is not meant for everyone, and I can understand people's problems with it. Now. With that out of the way, here's a disclaimer. I am actually a Dark Souls fanboy. However, I will try to be as fair as critical as possible, at least at the logical limits. I hope you did not close the video with that uh, sentence, because it's understandable why you would. I just admit it, I'm a fanboy. Fanboys are not logical, you know, but I will try to be, you know, so thank you for sticking with me so far. To all of you who did not close the video, thank you. Now. My opinion about the actual deadlock video. You know what? I don't like it. I don't like the video at all. Mostly because the arguments they present are dumb, pointless, or just plain wrong. I do like the game theory show itself a lot. But yeah, this deadlock video was just a disappointment. Now, before we actually get to the arguments, no matter what I say, I understand that people have preferences and everybody can't like everything. No matter what I try to convince people, everybody will not like Dark Souls. There is just no way. Because it's radically different from many other games. Well, majority of games, you know. But the main point of this video is, if you are going to argue against Dark Souls, at least do your research and give some very good reasons for it, against it. And in that way, I'm actually going to give you some ammo to the dark. I'm going to give some ammo to the Dark Souls haters in this video, which is kind of weird. So yeah, let's go. Any discussion of Dark Souls has to start with the difficulty. The series became famous for bringing old school difficulty into the modern day gaming scene. Hey, just because a game is hard doesn't make it a bad game. I wasn't going to say. In fact, I would say that the game's extreme difficulty serves to make it one of the most immersive, all-consuming gaming experiences on modern consoles. Forget your Oculus Rifts and curved TVs, Dark Souls has you in the moment, every moment. So yeah, we're immediately gonna start with the difficulty argument. No, the difficulty does not make it immersive for everyone. Of course not. Some people are going to be extremely out of the experience because of the difficulty. So that's a mute point. You cannot say that the difficulty definitely makes it better for everyone. Because it doesn't. That's just a bad point. Yeah, some people do like it, myself included. But no, everybody doesn't like it. Definitely not. There are countless other games with incredibly detailed dungeons and castles that I just sprinted right through on my way to the next piece of loot or quest item. I couldn't tell you a thing about the level design. So you just ran through every dungeon. Do you expect that everybody runs through every dungeon in every other dungeon crawler game? No, of course not. Some people actually do appreciate the work the devs put into those dungeons. And if you actually pay close, that close attention to, like, many dungeons in, for Skyrim ex example, because that's a very good example. Everybody knows Skyrim, probably. Most people do. So yeah, some people do run through every dungeon without paying much attention and just going to the loot. Others do not. Because the devs have actually put a lot of effort into those dungeons. And there are a lot of details you can find. Even some side quests you can find in some dungeons if you only pay attention and not don't, don't just sprint through them. So yes, another bad point. Which brings me to what I was originally trying to say. A difficult game is fine if the difficulty is fair and comes from the gameplay. 
but Dark Souls is difficult for unfair reasons, and that unfairness ultimately undermines the immersive experience you just described. Unfair difficulty how? Exactly how is Dark Souls' difficulty unfair? I'm going to consider this point later on in the video, but I'm gonna go over this like immediately now as well, so... This is for all of you who will not watch any more than the response, the response part of the, the, this video. So yes, Dark Souls has respawning enemies. Boo hoo! That makes it unfair difficulty because if you have to go and back to the respawn point or bonfires, you have to the enemies respawn and you can just like you can can just mash through them. Why does that make it unfair? Like. If the enemies did not respawn, however, you could just kill one, return to the bonfire, kill another one, return to the bonfire, etc. Until you reach the boss. Which would make you incapable of beating the boss because you have not experienced true Dark Souls. No, just basically you haven't mastered the fighting system by that point. So no, that's not unfair difficulty. Another point I found was like, unfair difficulty because the bonfires are far apart. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Personally, I think the bonfires are actually a bit too close to each other, and that just makes it... <sighs> but yeah, some people might find that the bonfires are too far apart, and that you have to trek through, like, half an hour. If you die, you have to go through the same half an hour again. Which is not true, unless you are playing for the first time, in which case... I don't want to use the same argument that everybody uses about dark against uh, with Dark Souls for Dark Souls. Get good, but no, seriously. Because if you die, you have to fight against like again for half an hour. That's definitely not true, unless you really are not that good. There are few points that actually are kind of unfair. But I'm gonna get to those in later, and those are actually my arguments against Dark Souls. So yeah, unfair difficulty, please explain yourself. First, you have no idea where to go at any given time. Really? No idea where to go at any given time? Okay, I can see this in the first freaking, in the Firelink Shrine. Yes, you have three options where to go. And one of them is just the easiest route. I accidentally went to the hardest route and the first part, and yeah. Although I did actually beat that area. So, yeah. But, yes. In the Firelink Shrine, yeah, you kind of don't have an idea where to go. Unless you freaking go, like, the most obvious route that the... <sighs> That's the first NPC that tells you there's one bell up. And one bell below. If you just listen to that, you can read that you should go up. And there's only one route that leads up. And that uh, that is the pathway that you're supposed to go first. So now you have an idea. Then what? where, where else do you not have an idea? Well, let's see. Um, when you reach Undead Parish, like just before the first arc, Undead Cargo Boss. Okay, you don't have an idea where to go. Yeah, you do. Like, I can actually see there's one point that is if you ha didn't pick the Master Key, you don't have an easy way to get to Blight Town. Because the one way to get to Blight Town, the easiest way, and the way that I actually did it the first time, is with the ma Master Key, and that allows you to skip most of the Blight Town. But the other way is to go through depths. And getting to depths is admittedly kinda hard. Unless you paid attention when you pick up the key that says you can open a door and you have just like the I don't actually didn't I oh got I didn't take the video clip for this but when you beat the Taurus team there are stairways down and directly down the stairs there's a door. You cannot physically miss that. And it says it's locked. You can easily just figure out that once you pick up a key, you can open it. So no, you always have an idea where to go, if you keep your eyes open. 
But yeah, I can see how it would be confusing. I'm gonna go over this point later on in the video as well. But no, you actually do have an idea, I always, if you just, it may be cryptic, but you do have an idea. Which provides you a great experience where you're discovering and connecting with a world independent of any obvious guidepost. Okay, so, yeah, this is one of the huge, like, good points of Dark Souls is that it doesn't hold your hand and you have to figure things out and you are not walked through the game. So it's not linear. It's definitely not linear. If you know what you're doing you can really skip a lot of the bosses and go to a, an extremely hard area very quickly. But no, the sense of exploration and the feeling of being lost is definitely not good for everyone. By no means is it good that you some people don't like that they have to figure out definitely where they go, and that's the, uh, those hints that you get. Yeah, they are cryptic. Some people don't like that. So yeah, that's, again, not a good point. Except for when it doesn't. Yes, it's great you get to discover your own path, but when the most essential item in the game also happens to be the most absurdly hidden, yeah, a little bit of direction, a clue, anything would be nice. I, of course, am talking about the rusted iron ring. Ugh, this is gonna hurt, huh? Oh yeah. This ring, which enables you to quickly walk through water, an ability, mind you, that is necessary for huge chunks of the game, can only be found by leaping off an elevator onto a somewhat secret platformer, leaping into another ledge in a game that is far from a platformer, let's be honest, then climbing up a tower and crouching in a bird's nest so you can be flown back to the tutorial level. Without reading a strategy guide or an online tutorial, you would never know this. Really? Really now? This argument is... Oh my goodness. Really? You think rusted iron ring is essential? Oh my god, that's stupid! I know three places where you can use it. First is Blight Town, which you can skip. Well, not technically. My first three playthroughs, I did not use it in Blight Town because I did not find it useful. But yes, that's the one place where it is actually useful, but definitely not required. It doesn't help you at that much, because you can still roll, even if you walk slow in the water. So yeah, that's pointless. Okay, then there are two points. You have to fight the Hydras, and they are in water. Okay, you can still roll in water, and both of the hydras you can fight, you can lure the shore. So you don't even need to fight in water. And then there are some optional creatures like those titanite demons in Saints Fortress. Like immediately at down, uh, down the pathway there are titanite demons, and they are in par. And you can't walk faster, but you can still roll, which is the most essential essential skill in Dark Souls. Yeah, I used the Rusted Iron Ring once against the Titanite Demons on my New Game Plus 3, because I had to move to their backsides really fast. And no, that was still not required, I was just trying without to play the game without shield. So no, you don't need the rusted iron ring at all. There are not even huge chunks of the game. There are very little places where you can even use it. So no, it's not essential for huge chunks of the game. It's not even essential. It's only helpful, a bit. And you have better options for rings that you can use instead of that. So no, that's stupid. Then, the other point, you had no idea that you would go back to there? What? The, okay, the opening level is created so that when you fall, walk to the first fog gate, you immediately turn to the right. And, on your right, you can see that there is an item that you cannot reach. That's a clue. 
it makes it pretty obvious that you can, can come back here. Then, once you explore it to the, near to the actual boss fog, boss fog, there is a door that is locked. That's another clue. And then, the biggest freaking clue is in the very first um, hallway. When you look to the right, to the sound of the freaking footsteps, there's a huge freaking demon walking in there. And there's a big another area there. That you can reach. That you will reach. That's where you will fight. So yes, you do have an idea that you will go back there. And then the freaking elevator. Really? You do not you did not see that you could jump off the elevator? <sighs> well the footage footage. So as you can see here, if you write the elevator down like a normal human being facing the doorway that will lead you out of the elevator, you can clearly see that you can walk out of the elevator. It's not that hard. It's actually very easy. I went there on my first playthrough. So it's not that hidden. It's very easy to find. Yeah, it's kind of hard to land on that ledge. And if you have the older version of DS Fix, that actually makes you fall through it. But that's besides the point. You can easily see that you can go there. And if you freaking pay attention, you can see that there are stairway leading to the crow's nest. I don't know. This is like the stupidest argument that is in this video, spoiler alert. But no, this is very stupid. Okay, actually this is the second dumbest idea. It's the second dumbest point. But no. Rust ring is not essential, easy to find, and you have an idea that it is there, where it is. Bad video. And this is the type of obscurity that makes Dark Souls so difficult, expecting you to figure things out without getting any clues. Figuring things out without getting any clues, huh? I just listed several clues that you get that you can return to that starting area. Really? You have to figure things out without any clues? Uh, this is gonna need a lot more examples, so all of you viewers Leave there down in the comments below some examples where you have to th figure things out without any clues Because there are none Okay, there's one and I'm gonna cover that later on in the video if you stick with me So now another stupid argument Sure, but that doesn't excuse the game for being sloppy <laughs> Sloppy What? What do you mean, sloppy? This is going to require a lot of examples. Not just one that you present, which is not even that sloppy. The game is very clearly designed very carefully. They have paid a lot of attention to simple design decisions that make the game a lot more easy and gives you a lot of clues to what to do and they are just little things here and there I'm actually going to do a video later on about this those little clues but you can like go watch extra credits uh, video about side quests they talk about they they all have Dan playing to Dark Souls and uh, James is talks about like little decision choices that they made that help you along. The game is designed carefully. And you are have you have to present a lot of a lot of like contradictory evidence that suggests otherwise. Otherwise this is another bad argument. Oh, okay, hey there. Let's not resort to name calling. But it's true. From the first moments of the game. For example, you get to select your starting gift. Knowing that this is a hard game, I go with a tiny being's ring. 
whose description says it slowly regenerates health. After not seeing my health go up, I read online to find out that it actually increases the amount of health you have slightly, not that you regenerate health. If it's a typo, it's sloppy. If it's on purpose, it's lying to the player. Yes. This is the one little sloppy thing. There's a translation error in the gift selection screen. A tiny one. How is... Okay, yeah, it's a little problem. The starting gifts in the end are pretty freaking pointless. You really don't need to bother with the starting gifts that much. They are not essential at all. They, like... I really don't pick the starting gifts anymore. I pick none all dependent, so... You know. But no, it's a translation error. And you know what? Here's the picture of the item description in game. It's correct. Only in the gift selection screen is the translation wrong. A bit. This is a really stupid point. I get that, but again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, that this is a game that breaks conventions. It could have been a typo, yes, but even if it wasn't, it hammers home the point from the moment you fire up the game that this is a game out to trick you, lie to you, and ultimately kill you. And this, I take a huge, this is my I take huge issues issues with this argument. Dark Souls is notorious for being honest with the player. The game does not trick the player at any moment. Yes, a translation error is sloppy. I admit that. It's a little bit of a mistake. In a myriad of translated texts, a singular tiny little translation error that's not even repeated at any point in the game can pass through unnoticed very easily however the biggest problem with this statement is that Dark Souls tricks you no no it doesn't at any point everything goes with the same rules you hit something, it takes damage. This applies to everything that can be damaged. For every NPC, to boss, to freaking traits. If you see them and you can reach them, you can hurt them. You can snipe enemies from out of sight. You can kill bosses even if you don't see them. So no, Dark Souls does not lie to you at any point. It was a translation error and we are just going to have to leave it. It's not even the most useful gift, even if it would regenerate health. Which there is a ring that does that. And it's complete and utter waste. So no. The tran it's translation error and Dark Souls does not lie to you. Get over it. Look at another of the starting gifts. The Pendant. It says it has no purpose. And I sat there, staring at the screen the first time I played this game, sat there trying to decide whether or not I should choose that item. Because, let's be honest, what game has an item with no purpose? But it has been confirmed by the designers that no, the pendant truly has no use. It's just there as another trick, turning the established gaming trope of the seemingly useless item that somehow becomes important later on, on its head. Okay, so that's a minor nitpick here. The pendant is actually a memento that from the um, from the studio's earlier game where there was a pendant and it was an in joke and it was kept in Dark Souls and it's actually kinda cute. If you just go back and look at few things, if you research enough, it's in their earlier games. And it's a clear callback to that. Also, 
now that we're talking about it, technically there is a use for the pendants. You can trade it with Snuggly the Crow for a sooner or for a prize, which is not useful, but you technically there is a use for it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a memento, it's a callback to their different, to their earlier games. It's a reference. What, what about that is so hard to understand? Okay, fine. Point being this, Lado's in Portal lying to you? Different because she's an unreliable narrator. And PCs in Dark Souls lying to you? Fine, it's that sort of world, I buy it. But the inventory screen being flat out wrong, that's truly unfair even for a game that breaks conventions. Slightly big. The inventory screen does not lie. The inventory screen is completely correct. There are no items in the game with misleading inventory screen information. And even additional information. Not only about the lore, but about their weapons functions. For example, chaos weapons. In the item screen, they say that they scale off humanity. Which you would find out by... First, you would find it out by um, testing it out. But no, they are merciful and they tell you that it does. So no, the inventory screen is never wrong. You cannot fault it for that. Because a player needs something to let them know what the rules of the world are. I want to be a pyromancer, and obviously, I see that the intelligence stat is for magic abilities. So, for my first seven levels, I dump my experience points into intelligence. After not seeing any improvement in my character, I read online to find that pyromancy, despite it being about fire-like spells, actually has nothing to do with intelligence, and that I should be leveling up dexterity instead? Thanks, Obama! Finally! An actual problem. A really good nitpick. Okay, not a nitpick. This is actually a little problem, and I can understand why people would be confused about this. Yes, there are very few clues in game that indicate what increases Pyromancy's damage. The way you are supposed to find it out is by reading this that in descriptions. Here is the description for intelligence and faith. Where does it say that it increases the damage of pyromancies? Tell me. And here is the picture of spells. Do the pyromancies have the same attribute as sorceries or miracles? Magic is their own defined state. Miracles are their own defined spell class. So are pyromancies. They are clearly different. This is how you're supposed to find it out. It's not that hard if you just pay attention. So yeah, you can clearly see from the intelligence that it does not affect pyromancies. Big difference. There's a really big difference. And then the dexterity thing. Yeah, it increases casting speed. Slightly. Like, really slightly. Like, no, don't level up dexterity. It's a bad idea. It doesn't give you enough. Yeah, it gives you a slight cast speed increase. Like, it decreases, like, if I'm correct, like, one frame at 25 dexterity, I think, or something like that. But they are very minor um, in increases, and it's definitely not worth it. You are better off putting your stats into endurance and attunement, I guess. But no, the endure dexterity thing is rather st stupid, so. This is 
a fine point. Okay, I admit that. But there are clues in game. You don't have to figure this out by yourself. Or you can. I did. It's not that hard. Just pay attention. Read the stat descriptions. It's that simple. And don't even get me started on the item humanity. Perhaps the most crucial gameplay mechanic affecting everything from your stats. Okay, so humanity affects four stats. Item discovery rate, which you can see increasing. Resistance for curses, which you can see increasing. Defense which you can see increasing and then there's one which is not uh, in the statistics screen because it's not an actual statistic the, uh, the damage multiplier for chaos weapons which is explained in the inventory screen so yeah none of these stats are actually crucial yeah defenses are very nice but in the first few playthroughs, let's be honest, that's not how you're going to put your defenses. If you f if you want more defenses, just use a shield. That's a really bad point. They don't increase your stats. Not every stat. Not many stats. Few stats. A bit. You're going to have to dump a lot of humanities to increase your stats. So no, bad point to the way NPCs treat you. NPC reactions. Really? Is this the point you're going to bring up? I can think that there are maybe one or two who, like, who, NPCs who react differently to you if you have humanity. I don't think actually any NPCs react to you differently if you have humanity. If you have reversed your Halloween, I think there are like maybe three, but I can't recall any. There are some that definitely react differently to you, I'm quite certain of that. But no, every NPC, not even most, not even many, only few, and that's not even like clear. And it's only a few lines here or there. It doesn't do anything gameplay wise. So no, NPC reactions is a false claim. And I'm left to basically reverse engineer to figure out what the hell the programming in the game is all about. And when talking about the humanity, he forgot to mention the most important use of humanity. Unhollowing yourself. Well, obviously, that um, purpose is clear as to the option to revert to humanity states when you're trying to use it that it requires humanity, as well as the Kindle option. And those two are the most likely the most important things that you can do with humanity, depending on your game plan style. But yeah, and those are in the selection screens as you can see in the video there when you try to revert to hollow revert your hollowing it says that you need humanity or no humanity same with the kindle so now it's clear how you use them of course that's so obvious that that's probably why he didn't mention it <sighs> and then there's another use for humanity that he did not reach. Which is for many people the most important use for humanity. And that is the covenants. You use humanity in covenants to increase your rating in them. But of course, this is again very clear. Seeing as with the covenants, there's an option to offer humanity. Of course. Let's explain. I don't know why I'm so mad about this. These are clear points that have that are explained in game. That's why he didn't mention them. But still, he did not mention them. 
That's where the difficulty comes from. All the sources that are unfair to the gamer. But even if you inserted a halfway decent tutorial and a bit more direction into how to get and use some of these essential items at the time of when you need them, what are you left with? Lackluster fighting mechanics. Wow! Being trapped in that game really made you angsty toward it, huh? I was watching Eagleraptor's sequel Eyes video on Ocarina of Time, and something occurred to me. Dark Souls has the same problems. People think Ocarina is incredible, and that Z-targeting for fighting is super exciting and immersive. But in the end, that fighting boils down to time. Wasted time waiting for the enemy to attack or to drop their guard so you can attack. Dark Souls is the same way. Block, block, hit, block, block, hit. Or if it's a boss, run around behind it. Smack, 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 smack. Run around before the area of effect spell kicks in. That's practically every single enemy in the game, Matt. Uh wow, this point is just dumb. I, I'm gonna go over many of these points that he mentioned later on in the video because these are arguments that everybody brings up and I will give my fair share of the, the shake with that because no, none of those points hold up not at all if you play the game I'm gonna go over the bosses and the enemies but let's go over it here quickly the enemies don't just passively wait for you as a matter of fact, you don't even need to block if you're good. I actually played the game through without a shield. I'm gonna do that, do, do that again pretty soon after I start it again. And with many enemies, there are attacks you can't actually even block. Or you can, technically speaking, if you have enough st stability and stamina. Which is very unlikely for the most majority of the enemies. You will not be able to block them. I would love to see you block freaking Havel. So no, there are many attacks you can't block. Look at this, this technique called partial parry, but that, that's a whole different thing, that's not even a block. There are many enemies who are impossible to dodge, uh, who need you to do something to make them drop their guard. Like, shield break for instance. So no, you don't need to wait. And you can't just circle around many of the enemies. You can try, but that won't work. Dodging is an essential key element of the combat that you need to learn, and you need to learn it quickly. Because not only will it be impossible to wait out enemies when they are ganging up on you or when they are going aggressive, you really, really need to dodge, because otherwise you won't win the game. Definitely not. The enemies that you can't block are still fair because they have noticeably f high, uh, longer wind-up animation in their attacks to make it clear and fair that you cannot block them and that you have to move out of the way. And no, many of them you cannot just walk around, which I'm going to go over in another point later on in the video, but no, their attacks will follow you and you will have to dodge and learn how to dodge. So no. This is a stupid point. I do agree with the Ocarina of Time argument presented by Neg um, Egoraptor, which is that in Ocarina of Time, most of the combat is, in, is waiting. But in Dark Souls... No. I mean, you can play the game that way if you want to. But then... You can't complain if you're, that's the way you're playing it. Because that's the way you're playing it. And yeah, you can play it that way for some parts, but not for majority of the bosses. And even with the bosses there are reasons why you, technically speaking, cannot like do that. So no, this is a stupid point, and even though he emphasizes this a lot, there's no clear evidence for this. Because the enemies don't work like that. There is this unbelievably frustrating section called Sen's Fortress that has you platforming your way all the way to the top, walking narrow pathways, avoiding traps, dealing with these really obnoxious enemies, and you finally get to the roof only to see this giant in the distance. And I stood there, watching it move, 
calculating whether or not this creature posed a threat to me. Because if I died at that point, I would have to go back to the first bonfire I was at and start all over again. But that, Gerard, is fear. That is stakes. And that is good game design. Design that gets you to care about what happens to your character. So then what did happen, Matt? I died when a giant hidden behind me through an explosive boulder. Cheap death, man. Cheap death. Well then, if you died to that giant who throws the explosive boulders, you obviously did not pay attention to your surroundings. As you can see from the clip, when you enter the room, just opposite of the boss foot, which is clearly widow, sorry for that, there are stairs, which you see immediately from the doorway, which lead up to the place where the giant is. Uh, sorry again, in the video you cannot see the giant because I actually actually have to kill it and yeah. And yeah, so you can easily get to the freaking giant and kill it. So it doesn't give you any problems in the boss fight. That's a stupid point. No. <sighs> That's like if you are going to play the game carefully, you are not going to die to that. Definitely not. The giant may be threatening, but it's one of the easiest enemies in the game. And you have ha probably have fought another giant earlier in the game. So no. Stupid point. Very stupid. Yeah. And the proof, it, proof was in that video, so no. That's a bad point. I'm just really frustrated with this stupid points. Matthew? Players shouldn't have to reverse hack the programming algorithms to figure out the effects of items or stats. And they certainly shouldn't be lied to about what an item does by the inventory screen. You don't have to reverse engineer the code to find out what any item does, because they are clearly stated. And if you wish to prove me otherwise, I will make a follow-up video refuting those claims. Every stat description tells exactly what the stat will do. If you disregard that the uh, dexterity stat doesn't tell you that it increases casting speed, but it's so minor that you don't actually notice it unless you carefully study that. And again with the translation error point. Every item in the inventory screen is correct. So yeah, a bad point. All around bad point. Again. Combat shouldn't be this repetitious slog, and it should be all worth something! Where exactly is the combat repetitious? There are very few enemies that are repeated in different areas, and every area has almost every enemy is unique to that area. <laughs> That's just wrong. Each enemy has a different strategy that doesn't work for most of the enemies and they require you to adapt to different situations. Uh, and no, the same strategy doesn't work for every enemy. Definitely not. Unless you count baiting the enemy out, waiting for his attacks and studying and observing him to be a same strategy. Because that's not a not strategy. That's a tactic. That's what you have to do. That's learning to play the game. Okay, I can understand why people would say that the combat is repetitious. Because if we just boil it down, down to the bare essentials, it is bait, dodge, attack. Okay, yeah, if you make it that simple, of course the game is repetitious. But if we make it that simple, let's make every game so simple. Every FPS block, um, Hide behind um, cover, shoot. Hide behind cover, shoot. See how stupid that makes it? No, the combat is not repetitious. I can see why it is for some people, but no. The combat is definitely not repetitious unless you prove very good examples and the definitions why it would be. If you do that, I'm willing to actually make a a response video that will 
talk about those opinions and I will be calm about it. So, I challenge all of you to tell me how the combat is repetitious. Please do. The ending of Dark Souls is the modern day equivalent of congratulations, a hard tedious slog that results in an ending that isn't satisfying and doesn't bring you any closure. The ending. The ending is not supposed to be satisfying. It's a dramatic moment. It should be considered such, as such. It's supposed to make you think about and reflect upon the journey you had just taken. The hours of trial and error, tribulations and trials, what you had to do, and the finalist bosses in, in particular. Even if he is rather easy for a final boss, as with every boss in the game, you are supposed to consider what he means, why he is the way he is, what's the meaning behind him, and the reason for you being there, and why you are there, and why you are fighting him. This is mostly true, many, this is very much true for the final boss. You, if you actually read any of the item descriptions, or like even pay attention to the lore or the story, the final boss is very tragic, and the ending is supposed to make you feel empty. The question whether anything you have done is for naught. It's supposed to make you question life in actuality, whether our actions have any meaning, and question their consequences. The ending is made to feel, to actually get you to question your own life's worth. Obviously, that's just my interpretation of it. You are free to make you think about the ending however you feel, but that's how I feel about it. So that's the opinion about it. I think the Deadlock video is... has very poorly researched arguments. Oh yeah, the translation... Uh, the production quality is fine. It's good. Really. But it's... and it's kinda entertaining, I guess. But the points in themselves are bad. I, I did not like it. So these were my arguments. Feel free to leave your arguments in the comments down below. And your opinions about the video, obviously, because I am willing to... I really wish to get a really good conversation going on and make it, make another video conversing with the, about these topics. Because I know a lot of people don't like Dark Souls and many avidly hate it for many reasons. And I wish to know why. I wish to converse with these people. Intelligently, of course. If you're just going to throw, it's stupid and hard and blah blah blah. That doesn't prove anything. But yes. Leave your comments down. And as you can see, there's a still a lot of video to go, so... For the next part, I'm actually going to go through some common flaws that people have pointed out about Dark Souls. Some of which I agree with, some of which I agree partially. And some that I don't agree at all. So, there is no story. What kind of point is this? Really? You think Dark Souls has no story? Or lore? Or anything? What the hell have you been smoking? No, seriously. I want some of that. No, I don't. It kills your brain cells, obviously. Because Dark Souls has a very good lore, admittedly though it's kinda hidden, but yeah, it has a lot of story. You just need to pay attention. It requires you to think and read more. It's a story about the world. It's told through the imagery of the bosses, enemies and scenery. So yes, you need to think about it. Whoa, you need to think about the story. That's just too difficult. Uh, here's a comment I found in a one form. Terrible graphics, clunky controls, bad art design, always feels like everything looks the same. Stupid AI with enemies falling off ledges. So, someone actually claimed that the game has terrible graphics and art design. Really now? 
Whoa, okay, so, for one, the studio did not actually have a really high budget for the game. Actually, it was done with a really small budget, all things considered. Which in turn forced them to create the most beautiful game they could with a small budget, with less intensive graphics than they could. Most of the people would agree that Dark Souls look, at the very least, good. At least passable. Okay, I do agree that the texture quality is low, the graphics are not optimal, not actually all that good, and there are they do cause some performance issues here and there. But about the art design. Really. Bad art design. Okay, even if it is a matter of opinion, there are points to be made about art design. Act game actually has a consistent aesthetic throughout the game, but each area is carefully crafted to have a certain theme around it, the, the feeling that it is a different area, and it looks freaking gorgeous. Okay, it might be opinion that it looks ugly, but it certainly is not the majority's opinion. So, if you are talking about art design, that's a statement that you have to prove. Because art design is actually a thing that you can test out. Art design is the concept of every um, every detail in the area or in the actual piece of art to be consistent, um, consistent, thematic and cinematic. It's, it means that the game should be made with like the game's art design design is very good so that's the main point I'm getting at I'm not an art student so like I can't actually make any real claims here but the art design is definitely good if you just look at the different areas and how they are themed around something and that theme holds true in every piece of the area from enemies to bosses to music to the scenery most importantly the scenery everything looks different not if you really just play for the first like 20 minutes and just go to the firing shrine and you're like oh it looks everything same if you just look at the colors there are actually quite a lot of colors yeah they are kind of dull, grey, boring, but no, that's not true, there are a lot of green, even white, yellow, golden, and red areas, so yeah, there is actually a fantastic art design in the game, prove me otherwise, please do, I wish to get an argument going on in here, and then about stupid AI, Well, I know of one place, there is like two places where enemies fall off of ledges. In the very first area, in the Firelink Shrine, the enemies might fall off of ledges. Might. Never happened to me. Friend claimed that that happened, but I have yet to bait out an enemy to do that. And then in the Blight Town area, there are some really silly big villages that like to fall down, and you can easily farm some souls with them. But no, I have only those two, two, two examples to give. And I haven't even experienced the, second, the first one. So, yeah. That's a bad, bad, bad. You need to prove more. Ah, uh, the game blows chunks. I got it as a gift on PC and got through the beginner area and did okay. But the game ruptures so many glitches and errors that the memory leaks are crash tastic. And let's not forget the people who randomly enter your game and kill you, then leave after mocking you. Actually, by the time I nearly experienced that, I downloaded a trainer, cause screw the game and whoever the sword was who logged in was ticked but they couldn't one shot me. But I assume other people less inclined to cheat. I a cheating game got griefed something awful by people with no life that have maxed stuff just hopping into random games and murdering them. 
Point stands, unbalanced game, poor programming and utterly boring setting. Okay, let's go through every one of those claims in order. Glitches. Glitches, glitches, glitches. Where? Really now? Where? I have experienced no glitches in the game after a few patches. So when I actually get the game, there were no glitches. They fixed them rather quickly. So no, there are no glitches in the game. And memory leaks? I haven't found any records of anyone ever having memory leaks, not even in the test versions. Or like, in the first um, version of the game, so no. Then this complaint about the actual PvP section of the game. Well, first of all, if you don't want to experience the multiplayer, don't reverse the hollow wing. Just don't. And then, about the point that people who have maxed out staff will jump into other games and murder them. The game has matchmaking systems for that. So no, that's a bad point. You cannot just like grind to maximum, upgrade your gear to maximum and go to a newbies game to murder them. It just doesn't work like that. It's made to stop that. <sighs> but then, unbalanced game. You should really explain yourself here. The game has a pretty good balance, all things considered, since it has m very many options for the players. Even though I'm going to later on make an argument against the game's balancing, but for a beginner, the game has a good balance. If you're not handed, uh, left-handed, or like if you're not really that bad at the game, if you know how to play, it's really balanced, or technically speaking balanced. I'm gonna go over this point later on in the video, so... Then, poor bro pro programming. <laughs> no. The game is programmed rather well, with some actual coding issues, there are none that I can actually think of. I think some other people might have some programming issues, but no, I, did have, I didn't find any issues with the coding, nor have any of my friends found any issues with the coding. So yes, please, do prove me otherwise. If you have, film me. If you find any pro, uh, programming coding issues, Film the game and prove that you don't actually have any mods or haven't modified the source code at all. Yeah, you can easily break the game if you want to. But you can't complain about the game then. Because you broke it. Another very good programming thing is weapons actually have different hitboxes. It uh, depends on what, uh, what state of the animation do you hit the enemy at. What part of the weapon do you hit the enemy with? What piece of the enemy do you hit? And what state is the enemy in? Those are kind of hard to code, and yet they flow fluently in the game, and nobody even knows the system because they are so minor things, but they make the game have a slightly more polished. But yeah. And then you play, complained that the game has an utterly boring setting. Okay, that's an, your, your opinion. That's impossible to refute. I'm going to admit that. I can't refute that. Possibly. Some people have that opinion. Many don't. There is a thing called action queuing, which can cause you to roll when you don't want to. Which is basically that you can screw over yourself if you mash buttons. Yeah, with some controllers this happens, that you even put a, uh, a command and it happens later on. There are many examples of people like rolling when they didn't press any buttons at all. But that only happens with some controllers and certain mods, as well, well as with other few things that can cause this, such as some control versions have this. I don't know if they anymore have it. However, if you don't actually anymore modify the source code, Action queuing happens only if you do it. So, no. This is a bad argument. I couldn't actually find anyone saying this, but I know some people have complained about this. 
the game feels slow. Of course, it is meant to be that way. In your first few playthroughs, you are not supposed to rush through. You are supposed to take your time slowly. Be careful. Observe everything and everyone. That's the point of the game. Of course, this doesn't sit well with everybody, but that's their problem. That's the point how the game is supposed to be played. So yeah. You can kill NPCs and completely screw over yourself. Yeah, you can kill NPCs. If you want to. If you don't want to kill them, don't attack them. If you did by accident, well that's your fault for misclicking. Not the games. This happened with action queuing. But if you don't modify the source code, it doesn't happen. So no, this is not a valid complaint. Artificial difficulty. Enemies respawn and bonfires are too far apart. I already went over the enemy respawning part, but now, if the enemies did not respawn, well, first of all, you could not actually grind for money, but that's not that that's not the biggest deal. You can get through the game without grinding for money. But if you could kill one enemy at a time and return to the bonfire to get full Estus, you could get through the game with only killing one enemy at a time and then running into the boss with full Estus and without killing any enemies. But if you would do it that way, you would not learn the most essential skills of the game or even learn how to fight properly. So no, that's not a valid campaign, that's not artificial difficulty per se, well it, it, it's not. And the distance between the bonfires, <sighs> it's supposed to make you play more carefully. As with most de design decisions in the game, it's supposed to make you slow play through and consider every one of your actions. And no, the bonfires are not half an hour between each other. Okay, maybe they are if you don't think about or explore the areas and don't find the slightly hidden bonfires. Only in that case. Otherwise there are bonfires like every... If you take just if you run to each bonfire, the longest dist distance between two bonfires is maybe like uh, let me consider. I actually know which it is. It's like the um, bonfire in Abyss, and that's like maybe if you run to that, it's like ten minutes at most. But yeah, that's the worst one. So no, there's no artificial difficulty here. Maybe in New Game Plus, since they de deal more damage, but no, I'm gonna go over that point later. You have to grind through the game uh, to get through the game, or you have to grind to get through the bosses. <laughs> no, no way is this true. You can play the game without leveling up at all. And I'm going to prove this by doing this, that kind of gameplay at some point in the near future. But no. You can't grind through the game. Secondly, you ca can't grind through the bosses. They are far too difficult to just grind through. You can maybe solve you, some problems by leveling up, but you cannot solve every problem, not even majority of the problems. Maybe in early game it will help you out to grind a bit, but personally I never find, find it necessary because First of all, you get enough experience from the bosses, and the most important part is it doesn't help you. Leveling up doesn't help you enough. So no, you can't grind. And after you reach like level 50, it doesn't help you one single bit. You are supposed to learn how to fight properly, properly instead of grinding. This is not an RPG. It's an, it's an action RPG. I, I can't actually understand why people would make this point. I'm actually going to go to the bosses that can be defeated with this point. The si there are... Um, 26 bosses, if I'm correct. And... Some people said that you can defeat every boss with the same strategy that you used to defeat... <sighs> the normal enemies, which is 
block, wait for them to attack, and then attack them. Which is incredibly untrue. For one, only seven bosses have attacks. Only there are only seven bosses that don't have attacks that you can block. Did I say that correctly? Probably not. So there are only seven bosses which you theoretically could block all of their attacks. Every other boss has an attack that you cannot block in any way. Maybe it's a grapple, maybe it's an overhead smash, maybe it's an AoE attack that cannot be blocked. Anyway. And the seven bosses are... And I'm going to go over why even blocking all of their attacks is not realistic at all. The gar Belfry Gargoyles. Not Belfry? Well, the Gargoyles anyway. And the way you can actually block them is because they have the freaking fire breath. In the very first playthrough, you don't have a shield that blocks fire. Not enough to actually block their fire breath. You will get burned. Then the Taurus team. Yeah, you can block the Taurus team's attacks. Technically speaking. But realistically speaking, you will never have enough endurance or stamina to do it. I mean, yeah, if you don't kill the Taurus team first, and you loop around it, then you can maybe grind and come back and block all of its attacks. But no, not realistically. Then Priscilla. Yeah, you can block her attacks. Sure. But she causes bleed. And that's her major, my, her biggest problem. And that's why you can't technically block all of her attacks. Because if you do... Well, first of all, you're not going to be able to hit her. Because that's not how she works. You will not be able to just block her attacks and then hit her. Because she is... What can I tell you what? But you cannot block, just block and attack her. Because she doesn't work that way. And even if you do... Well, you're gonna bleed to death. Literally. Then Quindlin. Yeah. I, I, I actually see that you can block all of her attacks. But realistically speaking, you need a magic shield. And there are very few magic shields that block enough. And even if you do, you will still need another shield to block her arrows. And even if you do, it's not realistic that you can block the freaking huge barrage of magic bolts because that drains far too much stamina. But technically speaking, you could block her. And then Sif. Okay, you can just block all of his attacks. But they drain a lot of stamina. But I have actually blocked all of his attacks. So. Sif is probably the only boss that you can use the same strategy. Probably. And even then. Sif will jump over you, and you will lose the focus, and he will attack you in the back. So technically speaking, even Sif you can't block all his attacks. That was a long tangent, but yeah. You can't actually defeat the bosses that easily. All the weapons feel the same. Different weapons don't change the combat at all, and combat at all. Only the speed of the combat and magic is weak. I hope I hadn't read this, read this comment. Weapons feel the same. Really? So you don't feel any difference between a giant hammer and a slightly a very small dagger. What? This makes no sense at all why someone would say this. Like, the weapons have not only different reach, damage, attack styles, attack patterns, and attack areas. <sighs> like you can attack them, uh, enemies at different spots with them. But every def almost every weapon is different. There are a few copy weapons with different stats, and they still have different reaches. For example, um, Uchi Katana. Yaito and Washing Pole. The Pole. Washing Pole. They are technically speaking all the same weapon. Except every one of them has a different R2 attack. And every one of them has a different reach. Yeah. So no. 
Every weapon is not the same. And then the last comment that magic is weak. <laughs> you obviously haven't haven't played the game. Because the magic is the most overpowered thing in the game. It makes the enemies far too easy. It makes the bosses far too easy. No, magic is too strong. Far too strong. And even if you're talking about like no matter what kind of magic you're talking about, if you're talking about um, miracles, you can heal yourself. That's far too strong. And you still have projectiles. And they are very powerful projectiles. Very few enemies actually have resistance against the projectiles. Maybe you get less projectiles, but you still have a lot of utility. But, mi miracles, but miracles are definitely the hardest magic to play the game through with. But still, it's very easy since you can heal yourself. Then pyromancies, wow, you can just level up your, you can just get more health. And that, not worry about getting any stat to do more damage. Just increase the pyromancy claim and you do more damage. It's very simple. And even though they have some range limitations, they are very powerful. And they are very easy to use. And then the sorceries. They are the most overpowered thing in the game. Enough said. Next points. So, actually, the next points are actually bad points that I agree with the game. Since there are actually a lot of bad points about the game. And these are not only opinions that I have found out and that I actually figure out, I like, thought out, thought this up by myself. But these are some that I actually found in the forums and I agreed with. So let's go over them. So the first major complaint is how to access the deals. Yeah, this is kind of stupid. I mean, I did access the DLC on my first playthrough without any problems or guides. But still, I do agree that they could have made it maybe slightly re more reasonable nonetheless I found myself my way there but yeah I do agree with the complaint that the DLC is a bit too difficult to get down a bit frame rate drops in light down yeah th this is a major complaint in light down for some people for I, I didn't actually experience this myself and you can always skip most of the flight down and that definitely the most hard part uh, the most intensive part of flight down which causes the highest frame rate drops but still it has frame rate issues I didn't have but some people more many people have and yes I, I definitely agree that it is a problem thankfully it's kind of fixed not for everyone, but mostly fixed. Item degradation. Weapons break. That's not fun. Equipment break. That's not fun. It doesn't add anything to the game. It just makes them work. I don't know why it's in. It just limits your usage of weapons and it makes it a lot more annoying. I see no value in weapon degradation in any game except horror games. And Dark Souls isn't technically a horror game. It can be very horrifying at times, but no, it's technically speaking not a horror game. So no, item degradation is a bad, big bad one. It's a bad one. It's a, it's a really big minus, in my opinion. Some people don't have actually that big of a problem with it, because, let's be honest, it's not that big of a it, But it still is an the lore is too hidden and obscured for many players. Yep. For many players. Not for some. Not for actually the majority of people. It's not too hidden. Because it's very easy to find out. But I do agree. It might be a bit too obscured for a lot of people. And that is a major problem. And it's a valid argument. So yes. Bed of Chaos is rather unfair. Enough said. Considering how poor the jumping controls are and you have to jump. So yeah. Bed of Chaos. It's not fun. That That's... Anybody who has played against Bed of... Who has killed Bed of Chaos knows what I'm talking about. It's not a fair part of the game. 
it's ridiculously fun, unfair, and not fun. And, uh, um, you can easily be misled and have no idea where to go. For an example, in Honor Londo, um, in Honor Londo, right after the elevator, you are supposed to walk through a railing over a railing. And yeah, if you actually pay attention, you can see that you can kind of walk on it because it's clearly made so. But still, you can even see the broken window up that you can definitely reach. And you can actually see the enemies inside, but still, you can technically get misled and run into a lot of problems. That's a valid complaint. Not a big deal for me personally, but for some people it's definitely a problem. The game is not welcoming to newbies and is definitely not meant for everyone. I went over this in the very uh, intro of the video, but yeah, it's not very welcoming game. It's very hard to get in. And yeah, that's. I am. And it's not meant for me. It's meant for me. It's definitely. That's a valid complaint. Although it's a really bad complaint. It doesn't actually mean a lot. A game is not meant for everyone. What game is meant for everyone? Can you even aim a game for everyone? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. That's just harboring an erroneous illusion. No, but that it's a it's a problem. You can you can definitely say that. The game does not teach you about certain statistics as such as stability and equipment burn. Yeah, the game doesn't actually teach you about those things. But you can very easily experiment with them, and you can reasonably decipher what they mean and they are kind of clear actually pretty clear I never had any problems with them equipment burden is very clear it just doesn't ex it, it doesn't just clearly say when you your roll slows down but you can easily test it out but it still is a problem and stability it's not well explained but it's explained at least so but you can still complain about it it's a Kind of valid complaint. Fanboys over fanboys's over hype of the game makes it underwhelming. Well, of course it does. That's what hype does. You're not supposed to listen to the hype. What? Of course you're not supposed to. It's just dumb. Yeah. I have nothing else to say. Don't listen to hype. It's not. The game that will change your life. It might. It might change your life. But it's definitely not for me. Don't listen to it. That's my one. My one defense for it. Don't listen to hype. No matter what you do, never listen to hype. There is cheating and it makes the game unfair and you can get really screwed over. Yeah, I can see Yeah, that there's a lot of cheating and it's really annoying when you run into a cheater. However, I do not know if this is true in the Steam version of the game. I don't think it actually is. I haven't actually run into any cheaters in the Steam version. So... I don't know. Cheating is always a problem. So that's. I don't know. I don't know if there's that much cheating in the Steam version. If there is, yeah, it's a valid complaint. If there's not, well, that's obvious. It's not a valid complaint. Then. Enemy movement tracking and attack movements are kind of wonky at times. As shown in this video, you can see Havel's attacks move is changing changing their uh, path and yeah that's kind of kind but just dodge at the right but no that's kind of you can get screwed up but just learn to play better get good scrub no but seriously you just it just trains you to dodge at the right path. but yeah it's still a problem I do agree with that the balancing is poor and black magic is OP. Yep, 
Screw Blackbeard. It's an overpowered spell. It's not fun, it fires too fast, and it's... Okay, it's easy to dodge, but it still fires too fast and deals far too much damage. However, it's an endgame spell. It's arguably the most powerful spell in the game, in the late game. It's acquired in the very late game. It's probably the last spell you'll ever get, if you get it. It's not even that easy to find. So, yeah, it still is annoying. It's in PvP, it's very annoying. But that's true, yeah. And then about the PvP, yeah, strength builds have a difficulty dealing with the faster enemies in PvP. But there's this little thing called changing their direction between the attack. All the time in the while I was speaking, I hope that um, there's a video up here that shows how some heavy weapons and how you can change the route of attack midway the attack. And that's the way you're supposed to use heavy weapons. Start an attack, look for the enemies to dodge, and then you direct the attack at them. Because that way you will hit actually very easily. And since you do a, use a heavy weapon, you will easily dominate the enemies. But still, heavy weapons are a lot harder to use in the PvP. And that's kinda unfair. But it's possible to really deal with the heavy with deal with enemies with heavy weapons. Especially like the giant daddy build is just ridiculously powerful. However, there's a little thing I do have a problem with, and that's the Black Knight Halberd. It's just too powerful for its own good. It's just unreasonably powerful. Okay, that's not exactly true, it's true in the PvE, but in, in PvP, well, it has some of the most easily um, easily predictable attack patterns, and it's very easy to dodge and punish. So that's not actually a problem. But yeah, there are some balancing issues here and there. I do agree. It's a fair. Especially with the black magics, because screw black beat, seriously. Archers in Anor Londo. Yeah, this is a big problem that I have. Especially in the pathway that everybody knows. Everybody knows what I'm talking about when I mention the archers in Anor Londo. They are just a plain awful idea. I, I don't know. Okay, I do understand why they were added there, because they provide a very hard challenge it's not actually a fair challenge however so it's a really annoying point but i can see why they are there since if you don't get good at dodging and anticipating and paying attention you will not get past that point but it still is kind of unfair and you can use that as a complaint it's a valid the new game plus doesn't change enough of the game. This is true. Uh, there are only a few things that change. Like the enemy's health and damage and armor and stuff like that. Some enemies, however, change their attack behavior, but it's true. The enemies don't enemies don't change enough in new game plus. So that makes it not actually that much worth going to new game plus it still is fun and i do like going to new game plus i have made it i think the new game plus seven even further i think but you know it's still it's not such a fun challenge anymore at that point and then as a pc port it is a bad pc port. this is very true it was badly ported for pc it's really Amazing how badly they made it. Like, jeez, it. Oh, wow. If you just play it, it's very hard to. Do. Well, the controls are for one. Okay, the controls are actually fine once you get used to them. With the keyword being getting used to them. You shouldn't have to get used to them. That's just bad. But. And then the game runs poorly on PC. Apparently, um, some people had this issue. A lot of people had this issue. 
I did not personally, but I have seen how people have this issue, and I have friends who have um, complained about this. So I put this in the category that I do agree with, since I have seen people have issues, but I cannot personally confirm this. And then the game's overrated. Well, that's just a matter of opinion, actually. Of course, the hype is unreal and too much, but who actually believes that? Dark Wraith's Covenant is too impossible to reach. Very easily or early. Yep. They are far too obscured. I, I do agree with this. If you actually... You can actually really get confused about where to go since it's not explicitly meant said where they are. You can reach them if you experiment with the game, but I must admit they are just the hardest covenant to reach because they are just ridiculously hidden. It's it's really hard. It's just really stupid. You are forced into PvP if you wish to summon your friends to help you. Yes, that is true, and it's actually rather BS. But if you wish to gain the advantage, you really need to take the risk. Still, it's kind of BS that you have to... You are very in a very big problem if you actually wish to play with your friends. But, you know... Some people like the PvP, some people don't like the PvP. Some people don't like the PvP versus many people. But I have personally dealt with a lot of 1v3 situations, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's part of the game, but seriously, it's still a big problem that you are forced to fight in PvP, even against your will, if you wish to play with your friends. You can disconnect from the internet and summon NPCs to help you still, and then you won't get invaded, but unless ex except some NPC invaders, but that's besides the point. But yeah, they are that the forced PvP is rather unfair. I do yes. It's really unfair. And the final point is that some enemies are unfair. For an example, take the blow dart sniper. You can't see it very well in this footage, but the darts they shoot, first of all, they cause toxic, which is a very powerful poison. That for one is very annoying. They, it builds up very quickly and if you get hit once, you are... you get toxic. Toxic. That's bullshit. That's just bullshit. Then, the bullet is very hard to see. And then there are many of these little buggers. Thankfully though, they don't respawn. But still, it's... they are really stupid enemies. I just don't know. I don't like them. At all. So yeah, that's the last point. Okay, this video was... <laughs> pretty damn long <laughs> oh my god this is long <sighs> but all of you who did actually watch this completely please do tell me your opinions i wish to create a conversation with people and if i get enough comments like actual reasonable comments that point out the flaws in the game or have anything to say against my arguments please i wish to hear them i want to talk with talk with people about this. I want to converse with a hater about the game. Hopefully with a hater who isn't just a plain boring hater because it's cool and doesn't give reasonable excuses. But I wish to create a conversation. If I get enough responses I'm very likely going to do another response video to this and going, I'm going to try my best to refute the points that are brought up. Or at least go over them. So, with that out of the way, I thank you all for who sticked with me for this far, because jeez, this is a long video. But I went through a lot of things. So, I thank you all for watching. Very much thank you. I'm so thankful if you watched this far. Leave your... Leave everything you can be under in the comments. Like, say first or second. Just say first even if you're not first. Because, you know, why not? I wish to hear from you. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Gun Moo out.